gang in studio the man the myth uh the norwegian i think that's what they say the man the myth the norwegian lars knobloch of nordic home inspections and nordic companies how are you my good friend i'm doing great Excellent. Uh, you uh, you are the master blaster of all things home inspections. Give give the people listening maybe a little bit of your resume so they understand exactly why you are so uh, astute and well versed when it comes to inspections. So uh, I started this company about ten years ago, doing uh, building inspections. We have been doing commercial, residential, environmental, and had a wide experience in uh, all kinds of buildings that we take with us into our. Uh, uh, residential inspections uh, experience is everything in the home inspection industry. The more inspections you do, you do, uh, the more experience you get. The easier you find things and are able to identify problems. Um, and we are the company that does the most inspections in our area. Um, I think last year we did about 1,200. Wow! So uh, we have a, a crazy good experience for what we do, um, and really focus on uh, on helping our our clients make an educated decision. That's our mm -hmm. main goal with every single inspection. And you're seeing the whole gamut, aren't you, Lars? Like you're inspecting forty thousand dollar homes, four hundred thousand dollar homes, four million dollar commercial properties, and everything in between, right? That's exactly right. Okay. I, had a prime example on that here. Uh, last week we did a seven eight thousand dollar house, and then the following one was uh, eight hundred thousand dollar house, and then hmm. you, you get uh, a pretty wide spectrum <laughs> spectrum there. And you are just as diligent on the inexpensive ones as you are the expensive ones. And, and you're, of course, just protecting your time as if it's a bigger house, you just charge more because you're going to spend more time, right? You, you have to, and there's a lot more things to look at. And there's there's more liability involved. The mechanical is bigger. The roof is more complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's um, yeah, the bigger the house, the more fancy it is and, and the, the, the bigger risk of things to happen. So the, the price is, is um, different on larger houses, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Now I'm I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think you had told me that in the last ten years you've done between six and seven thousand inspections. Is that the right number? Yeah, that is about right. Okay. And how many times have you been sued by a homeowner for doing a bad job? None. Okay. And I knew that answer. That was a that was the biggest softball I can throw you, Lars. <laughs> Thank you. Because yeah, if you're looking at seven thousand homes, you have so much liability on you. Because you are taking everything that you see, everything that you know, and you have to make sure that that homeowner knows what they're getting themselves into. Yep. How are you so thorough? Well, you, I don't know. You have experience, I think. Yep. Um, in um, even before entering this uh, industry, I, I had uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, with building houses, remodeling houses, inspecting houses. So I think that's a, that's a huge help. Uh, but then just a, an inner driver thing to be able to want, really want to help people make the right decision, really don't want to miss anything. And honestly, of course, we have missed things over uh, the last 7,000 inspections mm -hmm. we have done and we have gotten complaints. But when we do compl get a complaint for something that we, we truly should have caught or or or, uh, or missed, we, we're not going to run away from it. We really want to own it and, and stand up and say, hey, we missed this and mm -hmm. we'll help you figure this out. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you tuning in, we have Lars Knobloch of Nordic Home Inspections and Nordic Companies talking about all things home inspections. And Lars, it's spring. It things is. are melting. Uh, the big F word of flood is in, like, it, it's, it's right there. Uh, it, it's in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see mass uh, clarity, I think, on what's to come. What do homeowners need to be doing to protect themselves and to get ready? Well, so now that the snow is starting to melt and we're starting to see more of the roof, the snow is melting around the home's foundation. Um, some of the things to do is make sure your gutters are cleaned off so the snow is going to melt off mm. uh, or drain off into the well, gutters. And what, if, what if my gutters are packed with ice? Well, then you are out of luck. You just have to wait. <laughs> Make sure I, you're done. I thought you would have this great solution. No. This is, you're out of luck. You're out of luck. Then then, then it's your bad because you should have cleaned them um, before last the winter hit, right? But make sure you look in your down spots. They can also be, be clogged, although you don't see that from the gutter necessarily. But there, um, there are some ice melt things we can get for our it gutters, is, right? Yeah. yeah. But sometimes that could curl metals too, mm -hmm. depending on what you use. Right. Um, Do you know what I did back in the day? I had I had an old house up by El Zagel uh, in North Fargo. And... We had uh, just ice 
build up in our gutters and it was it was pretty intense and so i read somewhere somebody's like yeah you fill uh you fill an old sock yeah. with uh with the salt that you use for your sidewalk and yeah. you throw that up on your roof i had a two-story house and i didn't bother like taking a ladder and placing them so i just threw <laughs> socks until they stuck on the roof and then uh the snow melted uh, i still had ice in my gutters and then i had dirty socks spread <laughs> across my roof so um yeah, don't take advice from me, please. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. What um, else do people need to be doing? Make sure your sump pump hose now, or actually check your sump pump, because so many people have left their outside hose on over the winter. Mm -hmm. And when we see that, it's probably about 50-50% chance that your sump pump has burned out at this point. Really? So we see a lot of sump pumps that doesn't work because the hose was left on on the outside. The pump's been trying to pump water out over the winter and it wasn't able to, and it runs continuously and burns out eventually. Mm -hmm. So that is... You, you just did a home inspection on uh, one of our SNAP properties yesterday, Oh, and the sump pump was burned out, right? Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty common, isn't uh -huh. it, Lars? Is that, that was a classic example of that. We see that quite often right yeah. now. And and there is a company, Ben Franklin uh, Plumbers right now is offering free sump pump checks, yeah. which I think is great. Of course, there is the opportunity to get a backup, which I think is so essential right now, isn't it, Lars? Every inspection is something we tell people, always get a backup, always mm -hmm. get a backup. Your sump pump is going to fail sooner or later, and it's going to stink, and it's going to flood your basement, and you're going to kick yourself, you're going to fix your basement, and guess mm -hmm. what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Get a backup system then, but that's too late. So there's two options as well with uh, backup systems, and and this is at least what I've heard is the Ring doorbell. Uh, I think it's Ring or Nest. I forget which one it is, but they have uh, sensors down in your sump pump area too. Really? Yeah. And I then I have that. I have a home security system, and that's tied to my sump pump as well. So if that Sweet. ever starts malfunctioning, I get a notification. Nice. Yeah. Never so, heard of that. Yeah. Uh, things to think ahead of, and I think that technology can really help us with this sump pump. But please have a backup on top of your sump pump and make sure yes. that that's working. Great yes. advice. What else do people need to know, Lars? Um, what else at this point? Now we're um, heading into the summer. Um, probably 90% of the AC units that we see are completely clogged, filled dirty. Hmm. Um, so service your, this may be a little early, but hopefully uh, we'll uh, get some sun here and temperatures above 60 degrees and you can start running your AC. Yeah. Um, definitely something to consider servicing your AC because if it's not running efficiently, it's going to cause you a lot of money over the over the summer. Yeah. And servicing your AC, I think, is a pretty inexpensive. I would do your AC and your furnace at the same time, especially yeah. when you're... Uh, if you haven't serviced your furnace annually, you should. Same with your air conditioner, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lars, I want to I wanna stay on the, the flood topic for just another moment. Mm -hmm. Um what kind of danger do people have with the snow that's packed around their house? I'll give you an example is we had hired some people to, to shovel off our roof because uh, I think that a lot of people had to do that this last winter. And mm -hmm. we have a pretty steep roof and I just had my knee replaced. So I'm not getting up there. Yeah. The snow that they took off fell right past the overhang, yep. which means that my foundation has buildup of snow all around. Should I be removing that? Uh, should I just trust that my sump pump and my drain tile are going to take care of it? Like, what does that look like? Honestly, I would say, should I, should I be removing that? I would say it depends. Okay. Ideally, yes. Solid answer. Yes. <laughs> it depends because if, if, the, if it snows, like if the snow smell, gr smells gradually now, like a little bit during the day or freezing up mm -hmm. a little bit during the day. Which is it, what it's been doing right yeah, now. Yeah. So if it continues the way it is right now, not really too worried about it unless you have like a massive amount of snow there. Mm -hmm. um, because that snow is usually pretty solid, compacted ice yeah. on there too right yeah. now. So it's, it's, it's not fun to try to remove it. So I would just keep an eye on it. And if we certainly head into, you know, 40, 50 degree temperatures now. And then it I would stays sure, above freezing at yeah. night. That's a really important thing to note, right? That is when you really want to go after it. But mm -hmm. the other concern is too that um, the the ground kind of froze, saturated mm -hmm. uh, last year. Um, so that means it's all it has so much water in it. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah it, it, it all depends. Really, it all depends is the right answer. I yeah. Think. And, and here's what we need to note, folks, and we're going to end on this. Uh, the big floods that we have had, uh, I think of uh, 2009 and 1997, and I think uh, 2001 as well, those three years that I remember with massive uh, intensity, we got hit with big rainfalls during the melt. 
And so uh, watch for those rainfalls, of course. Uh, protect your home, protect your neighbor's home. Let's pray that it's not chaotic. But Lars, you've been such a good ally to our homeowners and to those that are buying houses so that they know how to protect their house. So thanks for what you do. Thank you. Folks, go to nordichomeinspection.com. Is that right? That is right. I love it. Nordichomeinspection.com to learn about Lars Knobloch and to schedule a home inspection. Even if you're not planning on moving, you should find out what your house has behind those walls. In the meantime, we're going to go to break. This is Real Estate Radio with Eric Hatch.